Welcome to Jewish Cinematheque, where we meet some of the important faces involved with films that tackle aspects of the Jewish experience. Today we meet two very talented documentarians, Gil Levanon from Israel, whose family survived the Holocaust, and Kat Rohrer from Austria, whose grandfather was a high-ranking Nazi officer. Together they take us to Israel, Vienna, Salzburg, and Berlin, where we meet with survivors who have a conflicting relationship with their European birthplace and their Israeli grandchildren, some of whom have chosen to make Austria or Germany their new home. Their film is Back to the Fatherland. Gil and Kat, welcome Thank to you. Jewish Cinematheque. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, thanks for having so us. So you've tackled a, um, an issue that's very much on the front pages of uh, newspapers all across the world. Germany has been so welcoming uh, to Jews. Uh, and here we have a situation where the political situation has changed. And you have, what, how many Israelis now living in Germany? What, 20,000? The numbers, are, the numbers are tricky. It's estimated because a lot of those young Israelis have a German passport. So when they move to Germany, they don't get recognized as Israeli. Uh, or any other European passport, they won't get recognized as an Israeli officially in the numbers. So Can you explain to the audience why they have the, uh, the uh, European German. passports? Right. Um, so um, former Nazi countries, particularly Germany and Austria, but also now Poland, the Czech Republic, and Hungary, if their grandparents were uh, forced to leave or stripped of their citizenship, they have now the right to reclaim it. So sometimes their grandparents reclaimed it and then it's handed down, or sometimes the parents then reclaimed it and it's handed down. So with that, they have a EU citizenship and are not really statistically recognized as Israelis moving. Yeah. What's the attraction? To you yourself have left Israel. Sure. And now are living in Vienna. Yes. What's um, what? What took you there? I think before I reach um, the Israeli group in specific, I believe we belong to a generation that is very lucky in the sense that we we can afford traveling. It's easier to get up and leave. Flight tickets are cheaper. Um, so and it's a globalized world. So all of us move a lot. Um, I'm not talking about refugees or necessity leaving, but by choice. Relocation, let's call it. Um, you have to be careful. That term relocation meant something very different many years ago. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about now. Um, and uh, for Israelis, there are a couple of reasons specifically to Europe because it's easier because of the passport. Um, and Living expenses in Israel are very high. Um, I'm not going into politics. Some believe because of the political situation and that they see that the way or the future of Israel is not something that they agree with. And also some leave to try something else and they will come back. It doesn't mean that they're leaving to leave. As for the attraction to Germany and Austria, I will say something that we, we came across in the conversations we had with many um, grandkids that we talked to. So growing up, my parents, at my grandparents' house, we had uh, shinken, and we had, you know, these specific bread and, and buns, and my grandparents would eat in a certain way and drink coffee in a certain way, and when I came to visit in Europe, specifically Germany and Austria, you suddenly see these things, and in a very strange feeling, it feels very familiar. You had no idea. And homey. You had no idea, you just thought it was... No, but it feels, listen, I did not grow up there. I didn't, I have no connection to Germany as, right. but there are things from my grandparents' house every time we visited that left a very, I guess, familiar, yeah, and, and to find them in Germany and in Austria and, and with, with her. She does stuff that my grandma used to do. Do you know how sometimes you have these buns and you take the soft part? I don't know how to... They call the soft part in the bread, in a bun. I mean, come on. I don't know if there's Help an injury. No, but it's a roll, and you it's take a roll, you know, and you take the soft things out, right, and right, they put it aside. Right. I never done that. My grandma always did it. She does it. And it's very strange. 
but we do feel some sort of sort of a connection. I mean, we would go to friends' houses in Vienna, and then you know they would have this little table or this little service thing, and they would say, "My grandma liked the exact same thing." So there is a, I think there's a familiarity. Obviously, it's in the roots, right? I mean, the grandparents were forced to leave, right? But they took their culture with them. So you had these 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 strongholds. I mean, Uri, for example, in our film, if I would know that he lives in Israel and see him there, the way he talks, the jokes that he Viennese. makes, the way he the way he tells stories is so Viennese that it's like he never left. So that entire generation sort of kept that, and, yeah. and, and they lived it. But how did the two of you meet? I mean, you know, Israeli studying film here, yeah. an Austrian studying film here, what, you were in school together, and then how did this project evolve? So we met at the School of Visual Arts, uh, and we, you work on each other's film, and I knew, we became very good friends very quickly. I knew about her family's past. We were very open about everything. Um, I, after school, I went back to Israel, Kat stayed here, we stayed in touch, and <laughs> after a few years, she, she was convinced it's okay to come visit in Israel, <laughs> and she came she to visit in Israel. She was convinced you were scared? Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was one of those people who reads, you know, who reads the news and had a particular image, right? Because usually the news coming out of Israel is not the happy news, <laughs> right? Let's, let's just say that. And um, there was a fear of that, yes. So her mom said, you're not going alone, I'm coming with you. And her aunt said, you're not going alone, I'm coming with you. And her wow. best friend was like, you're not going alone. <laughs> and they came, and we had fantastic 10 days. And one of those days, we walked on the Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv beach, and we saw um, an Israeli Jew walk with his dog. And the dog was a German shepherd. And uh, would you like? Yeah, and I was shocked. I couldn't understand how an Israeli can have a German shepherd. It was Hitler's dog. It was the dog of concentration camps. You know, I mean, it's not the dog's fault. But still, it, it would, to me, it made absolutely no sense. And that brought us to a conversation where I was, I knew that Gil's sister at the time was living in Berlin. And although, you know, I, I, I'm from Vienna, so I have a different relationship to Vienna because my memories are childhood memories. But although I like Berlin very much, even for me, World War II and the Holocaust is very present in Berlin. And I was wondering, if it's very present for me, how is it for wow. an Israeli or a uh -huh. Jew living uh -huh. there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I also asked Gil what her grandfather, who's also in the movie, felt about her sister moving there. Because I, I, would, I would have imagined that would be difficult. And um, then we started, you said you had never talked to them really mm -hmm. in depth about this. So I was like, why don't we go do that? Let's go talk to your grandfather. Uh, let me just stop you for a moment. Because mm -hmm. first of all, you, you're there. There's a great scene where you're, you're with your grandfather. Uh, and and Kat's there, and there's a little ambivalence about her even being there. Yeah. Uh, so, you, you know, and you put that in the film for a particular reason. So he has all these issues, and yet his entire life is Germanic, in effect. Yeah. 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 I mean, he was a tour guide for Germans in Israel for most of his life. Yeah. So then what happened? So the, the, the conversation that we had was very fascinating, obviously. I mean, I also... He and I started to have a little bit of a special connection because I would start talking German to him, and then that triggered this whole other side of him, um, which we we saw in other grandparents as well. It was yeah, throughout the film. Yes, it was fascinating. It was amazing. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and we knew around the time that we started, um, we we raised the money to do some research and to find other grandparents, grandchildren, couples. And uh, around that time, it was a lot, I don't know if it was here, but in the Israeli media, there was a lot of discussion about these young Israelis leaving and how could they leave to Berlin. And these young Israelis were starting to kind of fight back and say, well, what do you expect? The living expenses in Israel are so high. We, you you yeah. produce this pudding called Milky, and it's, it's a cheap. product of Israel, but it's cheaper to buy in Berlin. In Berlin. Th that became a symbol, yeah. this Milky, and it was called the Milky protest. So we knew there were others, a lot of other uh, young Israelis. And yeah. we started looking for them. Uh, first, we made the mistake of putting Starting an ad in 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 a in an Israeli newspaper in Berlin, and we got a lot of uh, replies. But it was very essential to us that the grandparents were alive. Yeah. Gotcha. So a lot of them contacted us, and the grandparents weren't alive anymore. And we said, "Your story is fascinating, but no, because we wanted to have to show that relationship and and what 
that move triggered within that relationship. And in the end, you chose, what, three families? Well, Gil, largely. <laughs> her grandfather, and then Uri and uh, yeah. Guy and yeah. Dan and Leah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about each of the families? Let's start with yours, Gil. My family? Yeah, I mean, your father is, he's, your grandfather is not a happy person. Yeah, when, uh, comes when you to tell this, him yeah. that you're you're leaving and you're yeah. going of all places to Berlin. To yeah. Berlin. Yes, um, he had to flee when they when he was 15. Um, he came with his brother, but everyone else uh, disappeared. Um, yeah, he grew up alone, um, and um, he. But he wasn't. It was never one of those people who won't buy a German you know, product. He just doesn't trust. He just doesn't, tr he, yeah. He doesn't trust them. He doesn't trust the people. He did visit Germany before. Um, yeah, but no, we never heard anything about, you know, don't buy a Volkswagen or something like this. But you, you, you just mentioned earlier that he didn't share with you or you didn't ask him, which? Well, for, for I did ask but I asked when I was 12 as part of a school assignment, and I haven't asked since. So I do regret not asking when, I'm, when I was older. Um, we had when usually... When we say ask, meaning ask his ask story. His story and, yeah, what he went through, how do you feel, how did that uh, incident in school, what do you remember, what do you miss most? Um, maybe not even horrible things, maybe the good stuff as well. We but did talk to him. I mean, I talked to him a bit in German. Was he more willing yeah. to share in German? I think it was easier for him somehow, which is also a little bit bizarre. That and I, I'm extremely jealous, by the way, the fact that she got to see a side of my grandfather that I will never see. That's crazy. Yeah. Because of the language and because culture. Because of the language, yes. You can see something in their eyes lit, and they, I mean, the grandparents, and they talk about things that they cannot talk with, not their kids and not their grandkids. We, it was something that Dan experienced, because he could share it with her. Because he learned German, although. Because he learned German, but I. Um, <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't like his German very much. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry I cut you. Uh, about, uh, did he talk to you? So he talked to me, yeah, he talked to me a bit about his story. I mean, he was, at the time, I think Both he the good and the bad. Yeah, 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 and at one point, we, we stopped talking, and, and he asked Gil if he was being politically correct. And he, he said, how was I? I said, I don't know. You spoke German. <laughs> and he said, don't worry, I was politically correct. And I said, you really don't have to with her. She, please. Right, so then we, we started the interview, and he was like, um, so the Austrians, they were not so nice. And I was like, yeah, I agree with you. They were not. And then he you know, started uh, talking about the Austrians, and I was like, I completely agree with you. It's fine. So I think... At first, they, you know, he in particular wanted to be friendly to me and not hurt my feelings. Yeah. When he realized that there is no feelings to be hurt, he... Why is that? There's no feelings to be hurt? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I'm very aware of what Austrians... I, I hate to say my country because what does that even mean? But um, what Austrians did. I'm very aware. I've... I've raised with that I've, I had an awareness from very early on you know we do the history in school very intensely so um, somebody telling me how horrible Austrians were is not gonna shock me or hurt me it's yeah, a fact it's, so you know you, you walk through the streets you speak to Germans mm -hmm. and and they're willing to talk about what they've learned in school but some of them will eventually say you know what enough already mm -hmm. yeah so was that your experience at a certain point? You know, I've been given this guilt and, and, and you know, lay it on me and I'm willing to accept it, but let's move on. There is fatigue sometimes, I'm not going to lie. But I think you should, the, there is a difference between Germans and Austrians. There is a huge difference between German and Austrian. I mean, the Germans, in my, in my opinion, and you know, Germans and Austrians have this fun rivalry competition. We, you know. They think we're cute and we think they're rude. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think they did, their, they did their homework. They did their due diligence. They, they, they own they their... They meaning the Germans. Germans. They own their guild. They, they talk about it. They've memorialized in a way that I think is commendable. I've met a lot of 
with other work that I do, I've met a lot of second generation Germans that in their free time, you know, do everything to remember Jewish life within their small community. Um, Austria is way behind that curve. I mean, we didn't really own up to it till what, the 80s? Yeah, till Wahltime, and, and we're still behind when it comes to that. I mean, there's a lot of homework, more homework that we need to do. And was this film, in a certain way for you, a type of therapy? It was oh, a very totally. expensive for therapy both. for all of us. <laughs> both. Very totally. expensive. For yes. both of you. Yes. For both of us. Yeah, for yeah. all of us. The for all of team. us. The, the whole team, team was German, Israeli, Austrian, I think for everyone. Guy, yeah. Dan, for everyone. You know, it's interesting in the relationships between grandfather and grandson, or grandmother and grandson, you see a reluctance on the part of the grandmother. She doesn't even want to go back. Right. But in the end, she's happy going back because what, what, because of her relationship and the bonding with her grandson. Right. Yeah. So is it that grandparents are willing to share with their grandchildren enough time has passed where they weren't all that willing to share before? Maybe both. Maybe yes, enough time has passed. And also maybe, I mean, there is a special connection between a grandparent and the grandkid. It's pure love without the rules and education. And, uh, and the grandkid can ask questions that the second generation maybe didn't feel comfortable asking, and it wasn't long, not long enough has passed. There are so many beautiful moments in this film. Thank I, I you. must tell you, I sat there and uh, I, you know, I, I, they, they keep playing over and over again. Uh, the, the grandfather on the, on, the, on the tram talking about when the, he was sitting across from a Gestapo uh, uh, member and, and arrested on the spot. And the reaction of, of grandson and even just watching the grandfather stop for a moment and, and relive it. Powerful. Let's, let's stop for a moment and, and, and look at a, a trailer from this amazing film, Back to the Fatherland. <laughs> feel guilty. As an Austrian, I still feel guilty. Sabale. אני מתלבטת עם אם לעבור לגרמניה. Ich habe mich entschieden einfach wegzulaufen. Einfach nicht da zu sein. Es ist mir mehr klar, dass ich, ich, ich kann nie zurück äh, nach Israel kommen kann. Ich habe keinen Platz da. Ich habe ein Kampf mit Kati Schimann, wenn ich nicht mehr so gut bin, weil ich nicht mehr so gut bin, dann gehe ich auf Matos und Nuss. Das ist das, was ich mit mir habe. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut bin. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut ich habe nichts gesagt, aber ich war nicht begeistert. Warum ausgesprochen, ausgerechnet in Deutschland? Ich denke, dass dein Grandfather ein größerer Teil von wer du bist, als du denkst. So a lot is being uh, written about, spoken about, uh, in terms of what's happening today uh, in Austria, and particularly in Germany. Germany is, uh, as you mentioned, Germany is a place that protects its Jews. That you can't even you know, make uh, Nazi statements. You can't wear a swastika. Um, but luckily. there is, uh, <laughs> legally. Yeah. Legally, uh, luckily, yeah. <laughs> um, but there is now you know, a, a strong uh, uh, increase in anti-Semitic incidents, um, there's anti-immigration feeling, uh, there, is, uh, there is a right party and a left party and the right party, the anti-Muslim party seems to be saying to the Jews, it's okay, we'll protect you. I mean, what, what's going on <laughs> and, and how is it different in Austria? People keep Austria. saying, I'm not going to Austria, it's too anti-Semitic. Yeah. Um, Wow, how much time do we have? I mean, this is a very complicated, it's a very complicated matter. Um, I think, the, yeah? 
I, I would say it's very, it's simple in the way, in the sense, no, I'm not contradicting you. I would like to add, and then you can go into okay. that. The entire world is going right wing, like right. crazy. And right. the fact we're looking just at Germany and Austria, we are ignoring Hungary and Poland and the US. And France and, and Britain. France. And France and Britain. So the entire world is focusing on these two countries. Well, because. Yeah, but does it make sense, really? Why, why would it happen there and not in Hungary? It does when you have a, a scene where one of the young men living in, in I think, in Salzburg mm -hmm. or in Vienna says, you know, I'm here for now, but it may but happen, up, and yeah. I'm aware it may happen, but I'm hanging yeah. in there, and I always know that I can go back to Israel. Right. So at least now I, there's a homeland to go to. Yeah. But I'm staying here. I'm not moving. Yeah. So? I, I can say the same thing about, you know, U.S. Who would, who would ever thought you would have Nazis marching on the streets. Why just Austria and Germany? Shouldn't we look at the entire world? I mean, a anti-Semitism, unfortunately, is a problem and is always a problem, right? I mean, we all wish it w wasn't anymore. I don't know. I mean, I personally don't know how to fix that. But, and it, I don't want to come off as saying I'm going to, you know, protect Austria. I think we need to be very vigilant. But I do think that Austria and Germany, because of its past, is very vigilant when it comes to that. And very, the, the, the majority of people is very not tolerant when any of that bubbles up. There is an immediate counter reaction. What pains me to see is that other countries don't have that strong counter reaction, like Poland, like Hungary, like France, like England. Um, like the US. Or like the US. Um, so I think we just in general need to be vigilant these days about the, these far right sentiments, and a lot of things get very muddled, right? So, as you say, the far right is saying to, it's doing the same in Austria, saying to the Austrian Jews, you know, don't worry, you know, we're against the. You're safe. You're safe, you're safe, yeah. Because we're against the Muslims, and, and we they have a, really hate Right, you. we have a mutual enemy, and it's the. I get real. I get stomach pains when I hear that because I would never trust anyone on the far right in Austria, Germany, or any country, and for someone to say that, but they they have they have done that, and I would just hope that the Jewish community would realize and be like, we got to be careful. Um, and most of the Jewish community, I mean, the Jewish community largely has said, we're not going to lie ourselves. There are Jews who have. There are. I mean, in but Austria, I don't want to get into Austria politics because it's particularly at the moment it's very complicated. I don't, I don't know if you've been following the news, but it's very complicated. I'm not going to get into it. But there have been high-ranking members in the Jewish community who right. funded the Christian Conservative Party, which they knew was going to go into government with, with the, far the far right. right. So I, that's something I do not understand. I just don't. How will this film make a difference? Do you, I mean, you, you made this film because you both are very connected with the subject yes. matter. But was there an intent, a hope to raise certain subjects, the question of victimization and the, and the perpetrator? I mean, you, it's, it's talked about in the film, especially when you have your group uh, of, uh, of Israeli uh, expats. Yeah. Um, you know, what one makes a joke uh, that he met someone and, and, and she came up to him and she said, it's okay, I checked my family history, there are no Nazis. <laughs> uh, so what's, what's going on? Why, why, why did you make this film beyond the fact that it's such a personal story for both of you? We, we did not want to make another, it, yeah. another classic Holocaust movie. It was very important to us to not have archive footage to not have uh, horrible stories. We wanted to look into the future. And that is why we chose to focus on the third generation. That is also why you don't see any second generation presented in the film. It's the third generation and their relationship to the first generation, the Holocaust survival. Um, so that is, I guess we will start with that. Right, and how the past still affects us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gil and I are lucky because we've had this friendship that we struck up in New York, yeah, outside of Israel, outside of Austria, and we were able to talk about these things very openly. Yeah. Not everybody is that lucky. And I think sometimes we all have preconceived notions of each other. 
right? So like Guy has in the movie, he says before he came to Austria, he was full of neo-Nazis and Muslims. So I think our intention with the film is to break down those stereotypes and start a conversation. Because although I'm from Austria, my grandfather was a Nazi, and Gil's from Israel, and her grandfather's a Holocaust survivor, there is a lot of things that we have in common because we have that shared history and that shared trauma, a very different trauma, not the same. But we, we both come from that history that yeah, a lot of other both. people can't relate to. Yeah. And what we've been able to do, and we've seen that in our screenings, we screened a lot through Europe, is that people from other conflict zones come to us and say, Bosnia, for example, or, or Kurds or Armenians who say, I have nothing to do with this, I'm but I can relate yeah. because... Wow. Yeah. I'm not Jewish, I'm not Austrian, or but I have the same thing. I see my grandma, I see my home, I see my... And it makes me think about yeah. my former neighbors who were Serbs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really the message. The message is that sh can we take those unfortunate lessons that we had to learn th through the Holocaust and help start conversations in other conflicts and apply them? Yeah. Because there's no need now that we have the language and we've, ha we've had the analysis to keep taking trauma into generations and generations and generations. Maybe I mean, can... I hope that my children will not feel as guilty right. as I do. Uh, you know, uh, I have to tell you, this is a film that uh, must be seen, and it will stimulate those discussions. Uh, so, Gil Levanon and Kat Rohrer, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And uh, we wish you much, much uh, success with the film. Available at theaters throughout, uh, throughout the country and film festivals, and uh, wish you uh, the best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.